Topping today's news, the National Security Minister weighs in on police officers summoned to court for police-involved killings. The Prime Minister says his administration can win the fight against crime. The Bahamas celebrates 50 years as a member of the United Nations, and the JCMP makes its final decision on the Valley Boys. I'm Jorino Saunders. This is your JCN Evening News, and it is a pleasure to have you join us. Today, 14 police officers were expected to appear in court after being summoned for a committal hearing in relation to several fatal police-involved shootings. Outside the House of Assembly today, the Minister of National Security, Wayne Monroe, shared his thoughts on the matter, ensuring the justice system will do its job fairly. The coroner has um, certain obligations, which I gather that she is now purporting to carry out. Um, the family of person, deceased persons have rights under the Coroner's Act to be in court. The persons who may be affected, like the police officers, have rights too. And so the system is geared where everyone has the ability um, to put their case. And so long as that happens, and so long as the officers are afforded all of the protections of the law, the families are afforded all of the benefits afforded to them, then the chips fall where they may, the matter is vindicated, and the courts will make a determination. Minister Monroe says regardless of title, the law is the law and will be applied to all accordingly. There are a number of officers who have been outrightly charged by the police for homicide um, in the family islands and a number here. The law is the law. If there's an allegation, it's put before the court and the court determines it. The one thing the public should be very mindful of is they can see that the police have charged their own. They can see that with other persons who the police have not charged and there is some process that says they must be called to account. Last week, jurors in the coroner's court ruled that a police shooting involving a 21-year-old Aliko Collins in Pinewood Gardens back in 2017 was justifiable homicide. Meanwhile, a 26-year-old man was shot and arrested following a confrontation with police on Tuesday afternoon. It happened around 2 p.m. when police saw the man who was on a motorcycle acting suspiciously at Bay Street and DeVoe Street. He started traveling west on Bay Street in the wrong direction. Officers followed him into Mason Edition and he reportedly shot at police officers who pursued him. Officers returned fire, hitting the suspect in the right leg. The chase ended in the McCullough Corner area where the man was hiding from police but was eventually apprehended. With homicides approaching 90 for the year, now standing at 87, and with an alarming rise in armed robberies, particularly carjackings, sexual assaults, and other crimes, Prime Minister Philip Davis expressed confidence in his administration to win the war against crime. On Monday, he pointed to several policing measures that the government has implemented, but says the key to fighting crime is prevention. And that's where it lies. And so we are investing a lot in, in, in prevention, by investing in our young people, uh, identifying positive um, initiatives for them to be engaged in, like for example, our National, National Youth Guard program, um, our Second Chance programs. That is all some of the initiatives that we started. In the police force, we have the Saturation Patrol, which is, uh, which is made to ensure that police presence are in these hotspots areas to deter um, any, any, any idea or impulse to commit a crime. Uh, and so those are some of the things we, we feel that we will win this war. And um, of course we need, we can't do it alone. Um, and we expect uh, uh, our Bahamian people to join us. In, in, and when you see something, say something. So that we could continue to make inroads in the scourge of crime that is afflicting our society. With there being a number of criminal matters before the courts involving former police officers and with the former chief of the Criminal Investigations Department under investigation for corruption, the Prime Minister assured the public that justice will be served and that he too is concerned about integrity on the police force. factor of effective policing is for the public to have confidence 
in the police force because it is the public that you, you rely on to provide you with intelligence. It's the public you rely on to assist you in detecting crimes. It's the public you rely on to help you with preventing of crime. And where there is that lack of trust and confidence, you will have this breakdown. So they are rightly concerned about what is happening in the police force. They too, I'm concerned. But there's a process. We have to allow the process to be carried out. I want to assure the Bahamian public that that process will be carried out with integrity and with objectivity, and the results will be known, and the chips will fall where they may. The, the, the need to restore the confidence of the public in the police force is paramount, and we will ensure that we work. The Prime Minister says the government is working to restore the confidence of residents in the police force as the public is the police greatest partner. The Prime Minister was a guest on the ZNS TV show The Rundown with host Clint Watson. The first order of business for members of parliament returning to the House of Assembly today was the first reading of the Bridge Authority Amendment Bill 2024 that will give the Bridge Authority added powers. The Minister of Works and Utilities, Clay Sweeting, moved the bill and explained the purpose behind the amendments. Over the years, the Bridge Authority has proven its value. And now with this amendment, the Bridge Authority will have the capacity to expand its mandate to own, manage, and operate, and maintain any bridge throughout the Bahamas. Madam Speaker, with the government's approval, this responsibility can be extended to any bridge deemed essential, ensuring that we do not merely construct, but also maintain our assets with the highest standards. According to Sweeting, there are at least seven bridges around the country that the government intends to repair. He said the government is packaging them together to seek funding and can hopefully begin repairs before the end of this year. Sweeting said repairs to the famous glass window bridge on Eleuthera will also finally be addressed. Before going on to support the bill, opposition member Kwesi Thompson had a few questions about the amendments that gives the bridge authority new powers. See, again... It is, it is all well and good to say we, if, you, if, if we pass this today, a fee is not automatic. That's fine. But do you anticipate in the coming months, in the coming years, do you anticipate adding a fee to the bridge? Because again, Madam Speaker, the question that I raise is, <clears throat> if it is purely a matter of funding, if it is purely a matter of getting a loan, the government can get a loan to fix any bridge in the Bahamas. The central government can do that today. But from my understanding, the purpose of moving a bridge to the bridge authority is so that funds can be collected for the use of that bridge and then put back into the maintenance of that bridge. Mr. Thompson also noted that there are a number of bridges on Grand Bahama that need urgent repair to ensure public safety. And finally, in this segment, a half century ago today, the Bahamas took its rightful place among the community of nations, joining the United Nations on September 18, 1973. Now, as the Bahamas celebrates the 50th anniversary of this momentous occasion, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs says the country is setting its sights on a new chapter of global leadership. Today in the House of Assembly, the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Fred Mitchell, filled in the public on the Bahamas' ambitious goal at the United Nations. Our flag was raised on this day 50 years ago in the presence of the Right Honorable Sir Lyndon Pindling and our first ambassador to the UN, L.B. Johnson. Uh, on that day, the father of our nation, Sir Lyndon, committed the nation to working within the multilateral context, and that remains our guiding principle today. So today, I want to pay tribute to all those who helped today to establish, build, and maintain our foreign relations. And I thank them for a job well done. Today, I also have the honor of formally announcing the Bahamas begins its campaign to serve on the UN's preeminent council, the Security Council, for the term 2032 and 2033. The election takes place in 2031. Uh, we have the support of all other CARICOM countries, and I hope that we can all join in this national commitment. The Foreign Ministry says the Bahamas' candidacy for Security Council is an opportunity to contribute to the UN's vital work in promoting peace, security, and sustainable development for all. 
You're listening to JCN News. We'll take a break here. We'll be right back after these commercials.